chapter 4, verses 4 through 8. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. Let your greatness, let the gentleness be known to all good men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, the prayer and supplication, let your thanksgiving be made known, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Amen. Let's our heads for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, dear great and awesome God, Lord, we know that there is none like you. In all the world, Lord, there is none like you. Lord, we know that this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you for another day. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. We thank you for those in our right minds. Lord, we ask now that you will bless this house, that you will bless each person assembled, dear Master, name by name. Lord, we ask that you would meet them and that one of these on this day. We ask, dear Master, that you would touch, that you would heal, that you would lift up, dear Master, that you would encourage. Lord, we also ask that you send your spirit into this place, that your presence would fill it on today, Lord, that as we give glory and honor to your name, dear Master, that your presence would be made known to us on today. Lord, we pray for this worship service, Lord. We pray for the word that will go forth. We pray for the man of God who will bring the message on today. Lord, bless your word. Quicken it. Make it come alive, dear Lord. And let it meet us at our point of need. Lord, on this day, we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. It's in the precious and strong name of Jesus the Christ. We ask these things. Amen.
the blood of Jesus is his blood. It will never, 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 never. It reaches to the highest, the highest mountain. Chapter 1, verses 2, 3, and 4. I believe Peter has something to say. Thank God for who he is and what he's already done. Second Peter, chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. I'm reading from the New King James Version. When you found it, you will discover these words. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may have, you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. I want to talk about spending time with Jesus. All right now. Spending time with Jesus. Just spending time with Jesus. We must understand that in order to show someone you care for them, you spend time with them. Amen. 
in order to show someone that you love them, you must spend time with them. Yeah. In order to show someone that you really, really want to be with them, well. you have to find yourself spending some time yeah. with them. Let me, let me let some man, some woman off the hook this morning. If he or she don't spend time with you, yeah, yeah, let him go. <laughs> if he or she does not spend quality time with you, then you need to question that relationship. Right. If they're always busy, if they always have something else to do, if they cancel on you for the fourth, fifth, and sixth time, well, it looks like that relationship has run down the road. If you don't have time for them, you know deep down in your heart that it's been over a long time ago. Uh -huh. In the text, the Apostle Peter deals with the fact that we must spend some time with Jesus. Yeah. Quality time. Spending time with Jesus makes a world of a difference. Yes, Our attitudes change. Our demeanor changes. Where we go and how we act when we get there changes. If you're looking at somebody and it's not really adding up, maybe, just maybe, they need to spend some more time along with Jesus. If your life is running amok, if your life is just out of control, I submit to you this morning, yes, sir. spend a little quality time yes. with Jesus. Amen. The Apostle Peter, Apostle Peter is writing this letter, and he says that I am Peter, a bond servant, meaning that he is a slave, he is a servant of God, He's a servant of Jesus Christ. Yes, he says, I'm writing a letter to those who have attained precious faith. This word obtained, this word obtained means that it has been given to us. It is a faith that we can't go and grab on our own. It is a faith that we can't get by doing things. It is a faith that has been granted to us. And because it's been granted to us, it is precious. It is valuable. It is a faith that God has given us that no other man, no other woman, no other child can give to us. It is the faith we have in God. You see, we are saved, we're born again. And because we're saved and we're born again, we can't brag about it. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 89 declares unto us that by grace are we saved. It is a favor from God. It is a gift of God. By grace are we born again. So we can't look down at the brother who's not saved yet. Because you are not saved because you've done something great. Ephesians, Paul says, in Ephesians, he says that you are saved because of God's amazing grace. Yes, God has given us another chance. We didn't deserve another chance. Thank you, Lord. Thank we you. can't go to church enough to deserve another chance. Right. We can't do good enough to deserve another chance. It is God's amazing grace. Paul says in Ephesians 2, verses 89, he says, by grace you are saved. Thank you, Lord. Not of yourselves. No one can boast about it. We are saved by grace through faith. Paul picks this thought up again in Romans chapter 10. And he says that, that God has given unto every man a measure of faith. 
So as we come to a point in our lives where we are saved and going on to heaven when we leave here, Paul says to us that God has given you a measure of faith. Thank you, Lord. Therefore, we can't brag about our faith. We can't brag about how holy we are. We can't brag about how long we've been doing good because even the faith we have comes from Almighty God. It is nothing we have donated. It is nothing that we have done. It is no deeds that have made it possible. It is by grace we are saved through faith and that faith is in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. He died. He died one time for our sins. He died one time for all of us. He died one time for all of our sins. That same Jesus that hung on Calvary, that same Jesus they put in a barber tomb, the same Jesus that got up early that third day morning, that Jesus is the one who gave us what we have. We can't brag about it. We can't talk about how, how we have changed our lives. People are talking about positive thinking and, and we ought to be positive in our thinking. And It's a sad day when every time you meet a certain person, they got something negative to say. They give you a laundry list of complaints they have with other people. They give you a laundry list of things that they've been going through. But the fact of the matter is, we ought to rejoice in the Lord because we still are able to feel something. Right, right, that's right. Say to youth and young people all over the world, you may jump up out the bed, get running and on your way, and you may run to the bus stop without a problem. You may run back in the house. I used to do it too. I can't do it anymore. I have to stretch before I move. I have to stretch as I move. I have to bend over, bend down, still spin around before I move. I have to even think before I move. I told you before, sometimes I can hear my inner self talking to my outer self. And it doesn't say get up and get moving. It says slow down, take your time a little bit. And the only reason I'm still on planet Earth is not because I've been so good. It's because of God's amazing grace. It's because God has watched over me one more time. The reason why I'm at church today is not because I had a good mind to get up, get dressed, and run out here. It's because God kept my mind. And if God doesn't keep your mind, your mind wouldn't be kept. I know, I know there are some people, not in this church, but in other churches around the corner down the street, that they got three, four minds. And all three, four of those persons will come out all in the run of one day. Yeah, right. And let me tell you, if God doesn't keep your mind through his amazing grace, you'll have six, seven minds. Right. Right. Hear people say, one mind told me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I obeyed the other mind. The apostle Paul says it like this, that in Romans chapter 7, the apostle Paul says that every time I try to do good. Every time I have a mind to do good, every time I want to do what's right, there's another mind. There's another spirit that enters into my mind and brings me into captivity of sin. And every time I want to do right, I mean to do right, but that mind. I stopped by on my way to the rapture to let you know it takes God to keep you. You can do all the exercise you can do. You can take all the prevention you can take. Somebody in the room can identify. You can take all the preventive you can take. You, you can take all the vitamins you can put up with. You can exercise 24-7. But at the end of the day, God is in control. Yes. And he keeps us. He empowers us. And he strengthens us. Apostle Peter says, he says, God has given us this precious faith. And he's given it to us by righteousness. He says, he says that these new converts in Christ have a special faith now. They have a, a precious faith. And this precious, special faith was given by Jesus Christ because of righteousness. Romans chapter 4, Paul explains that Abraham did not stagger at the commands of God. But because Abraham didn't stagger, it was credited to him as faith. 
I want to let you know that when somebody loves you, they'll do some things for you. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because Abraham loved God. Because Abraham loved God and what God stand, stood for and stand for. Because Abraham wanted to be righteous in the sight of God. He did not stagger at the promises of God. Somebody in the room today need to know that you need to stop staggering. You need to stop hesitating. You, you need to just trust God in your heart. Because that's where our faith lies. Righteousness of God and the righteousness of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we are not righteous, but Jesus is. We are not righteous, but God is. We are not righteous, but the Holy Spirit is. And he, the Holy Spirit, he leads us, guides us into all righteousness. Somebody had to catch themselves this morning. Right. Some some mother, some some brother, some some man had to catch themselves this morning. If it had not been for the Holy Spirit teaching and for the Holy Spirit speaking, you would have been off your rockers. You, you, you would have just let somebody have it this morning. But in the midst of it all, God said, Hold up a minute. Hold your hope. Don't go that way. Don't do it like this. It's because God is keeping our Thank you, Lord. It's because God is enabling us to walk in his faith. Amen. It's because God is able to, to bless us to see things that hadn't taken place yet. Yes. He allows us to be blessed by things of the future that we're still struggling with. And if I was to take a poll today, if somebody in the room, if everybody in the room would be true and honest, if I was to take a poll and say, are you struggling with anything? 100% of the hands will go up simply because we all struggle with something. Yeah, yeah. There's something about us that we need to clean up. Amen. Back home, the Megan, the Megan Lake singers used to sing a song every first Sunday at the Markham Missionary Baptist Church. They would come and they, would, they were brothers and sisters and they would sing this song, I got to clean up uh -oh. what I messed up. And I got to start my life all over again. Somebody this morning needs to clean up what you messed up. But I just stopped by to let you know, you can't clean it up on your own. You need Jesus to walk with you. You need Jesus to talk with you. You need Jesus to bless you. And it doesn't matter how holy you are. You know, it's just obnoxious when you see some Christians. They're so holy to they can't have a decent conversation. How you doing? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. I just ask you how you doing. What's been going on with you? Oh, the Lord has just been blessing me. And you ought to give God credit for blessing you. But just come out the cloud for a minute and have a decent conversation. Come on down, come on down. And one thing, one thing I, I sit and I watch when preachers are together and they, they all are huddled up and someone shows up in the circle and, and they begin to introduce themselves. Oh man, I'm Bishop such and such. I'm Reverend such and such. I'm Pastor such and such. I'm Doctor such and such. Let me tell you, call the name and tell them you are who your mama called you. All you got to do is say, I'm Matthew Davis, just please, I'm pleased to meet you. Let's walk on down the road together because you can catch more souls being down the earth than you can being in the cloud. It's Jesus' name. It's Jesus having confidence in us, and we ought to have confidence in him. The first thing I see here is the prayer that Apostle Peter talks about. There's a prayer. When he says, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ, our Lord, he's praying for you. He's saying, Lord, bless them with grace. Lord, bless them with favor. This word grace means favor. This word grace means benefits. This word grace means pleasure. So the Apostle Peter is praying for us. Not only should the Apostle Peter be praying for us, we ought to pray for each other. Get off this thing. I hope. Don't, don't tell folk to go to hell. They, 
They're going to make a way for that anyway if they don't meet Jesus. We ought not tell people to go to hell. We ought to be rescuing people from hell. Amen. We ought to be rescuing people. We need to have a demonstration where people who see us can see we're on our way to heaven. We don't need to broadcast we're on our way to heaven. Our lifestyle ought to dictate where we're going to. Folk ought to see you. And they ought to see something different about you. You don't have to blow it all out of proportion. You don't, you don't have to get all keen on it. You don't have to become the authority in it. Just trust Jesus. And walk it out. Have the conversation about him. Because sooner or later, God is going to open the door. And he's going to throw the door wide open. And when he throws the door open, then you tell them about Jesus. We don't God, we don't God to open the door. You just live your life. When we look at Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20, we find out in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20, we find out Jesus says, go and tell people, make disciples. And the final thing he says is, go ye therefore. Yes, right. What he said, these, these words, go ye therefore, it is perpetual. It is ongoing. He's saying, as you go in your daily walk, Make sure you talk about Jesus. Yeah, yeah, right. He says, make disciples. He says, make sure that you do things that draw people's attention to Jesus. We're about making disciples. We're about getting people's attention to come to Christ. It's not about us. Right. That's right. Too many of us want to lay out all our credentials. Yeah. All of our education. And I see some pastors that lay out all their education and they won't take they bought it off the internet. <laughs> we have to get to a point in our lives where we focus on Jesus and Jesus alone. And when you spend time with him, we know that he is first on the agenda. We know that Jesus the Christ is the main attraction. We present Jesus the Christ as the person who are we talking about and talking to and living on behalf. Yes, yes. So in this prayer, he says grace, favor, benefits, pleasure. Secondly, he says peace. Peace is rest. Peace is becoming one with God. You see, you have the peace of God, and you have peace with God. If a person is unsaved, they need the peace with God. Before you got saved, you didn't have peace with God. God was here, you were here, and there was a great gulf between the two. You couldn't talk to God, and God couldn't talk to you. Because you didn't have peace with God. There's a bitter dispute going on. You think you're right and God is saying he's right. But when Jesus died on Calvary, he bridged the gap between man and God. And now through Jesus Christ, we can talk to the, the God of the universe. We can talk to the magistrate. And we don't have to go to the preacher to pray for us anymore. When Jesus died on Calvary, the bell of the temple was ripped from top to bottom. It was torn apart. It says to us that we can come boldly. We can come with confidence before the Lord ourselves. We can come before God through Jesus Christ and tell him all about it. He says in his prayer, he says, grace to you, peace to you, and be set at one with God. We, we need to be set at one with the Almighty God. God, I'm wrong and you're right. God, I'm unholy and you're holy. God, I messed up and you never messed up. God, I shouldn't have said that. And you told me to stop saying it. You see, when you're saved, when you're born again, the Holy Spirit resides in you. He lives in you. He, he dwells in you. And just before you said it, you felt something in your heart. And I'm going to tell you, it wasn't heartburn either. It was the fact that you were about to be uh, condemn for something you were about to do and the Holy Spirit said hold your hope, don't do it wait a minute, don't say it people have lost their job because they could not hold their peace right. Right. 
children at home need something to eat and then you spoke up. I'm going in this office. I'm going to tell him. I'm going to tell her a piece of my mind. Well, Lou Ross would say his mind is a terrible thing to waste. You need all of your mind. Let me tell you, I'm just a few, I'm, I'm just a few weeks from 60 and I need the mind I lost last year. I, I need I need all God has for me. And so I got to make sure that I'm set at, at, at one with God. I'm, I'm, I'm at, I have peace with God. And so when you have peace with God, that means you're born again. But when you have the peace of God, that means regardless of what goes on around you, you have peace. When you look at, when you look at a duck, the duck just floating on the water. He's, just, he's the coolest creature on the water. The duck. Just, just moving, gliding across the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you go up under the water, uh -oh. his feet are just moving and paddling. I mean, he's stroking. He, he's moving down the road. Let me tell you, you can be the duck on top of the water and let God do the stroking under the water. Right. You can, you can be at peace when you're set at peace with God. You're not concerned about being at peace with other people because the Word of God says that you need to live peacefully with all men according to the ability that lies within you. Amen. But you can't do it by yourself. That's right. you, you can't forgive folk by yourself. No. You can't live with folk by yourself. No. You can't hang out with folk by yourself. You can't have the peace of God unless you trust in God. Yeah. He says this peace should be multiplied. This, this grace should be multiplied. It means, this, this multiplication here means abundant. Increase. And your increase ought to be abundant. He says, he says, I'm praying for you. And in my prayer, I'm praying that you have grace. I'm praying that you have peace. And I don't want that peace to stop today. He says that I want it to be multiplied. I want it to be expanded. I want it to be increased. Most of us in this room can testify we still lay, hanging in here because of somebody else praying for us. The songwriter said, my mama prayed for me. The songwriter said, my daddy prayed for me. Songwriter says, the preacher prayed for me. Guess what? It's not because we've been so good. It's because somebody prayed for us. And sometimes we have to have, have to pray a prayer that's not such a popular prayer. We have to pray a prayer. Lord, turn him around regardless of what it takes. Lord, shut it down regardless of what it takes. Lord, bless her to come back to you regardless of what it takes. Because they're going to condemn themselves. They're going to kill themselves if you don't turn around, Lord. I mean, children come out the womb disobedient today. Children come out the womb with an iPad in one hand and a phone in the other. That's right, Lord. Children come out the womb telling mama and daddy what they will and will not do. And it's all because the fact of the matter is, it's because we have to make sure that we reside in prayer. Yeah, yeah. We stay in prayer. So it ought to be multiplied. This peace, this grace ought to be multiplied. Another thing he says in prayer, that we ought to have the knowledge through Jesus Christ himself. This word knowledge is just not a, a list of things you know. This word knowledge means to acknowledge Jesus Christ in your life. This word knowledge means that you have to get to a point in your life where you acknowledge Jesus as Lord. The Bible says in Philippians that every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. You can confess and bow now or you can confess and bow later. you got to acknowledge him as Jesus Christ Acknowledge him as God. He talks about God in the text. And when he talks about God, this is a theos God. This is the, the, the exceeding God. This is the God of divinity. It is the magistrate. It means that, that he's the one that's going to judge us. People like to say, hey, look, don't judge me now. We ought not be concerned about who else is judging us. We need to be concerned about the great judge himself. God, the Father, the Theos God, the God, the exceeding God, the God of divinity. He's God. He is judging us and he will judge us. Right, says Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The second thing I say in verse 3 is there's power. In verse number 3, there's, there's power. 
First John 3, he says, as his divine power has given to us all things pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Power. This word power is the word dunamis in the Greek. This word dunamis or dunamis in the Greek means explosive, violent, dynamite power. It is the same Greek word we get the word dynamite. It is a violent reaction. It is, it is not just an authority, it is a violent reaction that will take place even in the presence of God when we walk to God. He says, it, as his divine power has given us all things that are pertaining to life. Let me tell you, when my life got changed, boy, it was dynamite. When my life was changed, it was explosive. When life, my life got changed, it, it was a violent exchange of the Holy Spirit colliding with my sin. Mm -hmm. It is dunamis in the Greek. It is dynamite power. And this power, divine power, simply means that it's miraculous. It is, let me tell you, if you want to tell the truth, let me just tell the truth if you want to tell the truth. My salvation was a miracle. It was miraculous. When I go back home now, God looked at me and said, if God could save you, God can do anything. If God can change your heart, if, if God can pick you up and turn you around, God can do anything. Yes, can. And if you were to tell the truth today, your salvation was a violent exchange with the Holy Spirit. It was a, a dunamis power that it took to change your life. Even though if you didn't drink a drug, even though if you weren't prostituting or, or dealing with drugs, even though you weren't a homosexual or lesbian, God changed you by his divine power. Thank you, Lord. That's why we can't look down on other people. That's why I told you we welcome all homosexuals, we welcome all lesbians, we welcome all dope dealers because if the change is going to take place, it's going to happen through the anointing power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. I remember when I made that, that first announcement, the first time, boy, I had folk look at me like, Pastor, you lost it now. But don't you know that those who are not saved need to go to the hospital just like you are here? You, you're not here because you like my preaching. I already know that. <laughs> you're not here because I'm so dramatic in my preaching and, and it's such a dynamite preaching. You are here because the Holy Spirit has led you to this place to hear what the Lord has to say and the Lord has changed your life and he's looking to change and increase our lives even the more. That's why Peter says abundantly, exceedingly, Above all that we can ask or think according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Everything that's pertaining to life. You see, there are people walking around, but they don't really have life. Mm -hmm. There are people who are inhaling and exhaling. But if you don't know Jesus, you really don't have life. Right. This word life in the text means that it's eternal life. It means that it's life of success down here and it's life of success over there. What does it profit a man? What does it profit a woman? What does it profit a child to win the whole world and die and go to hell? Good God. Let me tell you what I didn't say. I didn't say you need to be poor and broke to go to hell. Some people have, have preached. Some people have said, oh, I know I'm going to heaven because I'm poor and broke. Heaven has nothing to do with your finances. Heaven has nothing to do with the community you were reared in. Heaven has nothing to do with the parents you were born to. Heaven has nothing to do with the with whether you are a big shot or a little shot. Heaven has everything to do with Jesus. And trusting in his salvation story. So we must have life. He has given us all things according to life. 
all things according to godliness, all things that pertains to knowledge of him. Everything is to him. That's why, that's why, that's why we go to school, go to seminary, come back and say the same thing we did before we graduated. Somebody said, I ain't heard you say anything in the last 18 years that was different. <laughs> School is very expensive. But it teaches us control. It teaches us how to, how to hold on to what God has already said. And once we get back to the pulpit, we talk the same thing about a man on a tree between two thieves. He died there. And that same man that died between two thieves, they laid him in a bar or two. That same man that died between two thieves, they laid him in a bar or two. Out of that third day morning, he rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. Power for you. Power for me to live right and to talk right. Now, I do admit there are some who go to school, they forget the gospel story. I admit that they forget that, that, that Jesus did it all on Calvary. So now they're preaching wealth and they, they're preaching get rich quick schemes and they're preaching prosperity. Jesus himself gives us all the prosperity we need. And if God is able to bless our souls and to turn us around, he can give us money. That's nothing. How is it nothing with God? We just got to stay in tune with him spiritually. So he gives us power. And when it, this, word, this word given or give in the original Greek it means, means to us that it's been granted to us without any deeds. It's been endowed to us. It has been given to us even though we did deserve it. Matter of fact, if we were going to be real this morning, none of us deserve to wake up this morning. But because of God. You thought it was your love God that woke you up. Let me just serve notice on you. It's because of God. If Big Mama was here today, she would say it like this. It's because this morning, early in the morning, God took his divine finger from heaven and reached down and touched me. He reached down and shook me. He reached down and moved me. And my eyes flew wide open. And I got up and he allowed me to put one foot in front of the other. Hallelujah, because he's God. He has power. Yes, and because it's given to us, because it's given to us, we ought to take full advantage of the knowledge we have. You see, you see, I can give, I can give Sister David one rose, and there ought to be a sense of appreciation. I can give her a bouquet of roses. There ought to be the same sincere appreciation. Simply because the gift tells the story based on the giver. Now, if Brother Miles gave me some roses, I'm in trouble. You'll get there when you get to the house. Can't you see that big 6'5, six, 6'6 six, six man bringing me some roses and looking down on me? I'm going to ask him, Sister Irvin, I'm going to ask him, Brother, did you have something left over from, from Women's Day or something? Do, do you want me to do something with these? Who do you want me to give them to? Because the gift is based on the giver. And because the gift is based on the giver, then appreciation comes based on the giver. God has given us all that we have. Life prosperity in the pursuit of happiness. The United States of America didn't give it to us. God has given it to us. Because if the United States of America had given it to us, they would have taken it back by now. I mean, and they have taken it back in a hurry. And we see it being played out all over this great nation because they think they have given something to us. Colin Kaepernick doesn't have a job because of, it's not because of the flag and the disrespect to the flag. They found one man that was brown or black and they found one man that they wanted to make an example of. But guess what? He's better off without it. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. That's right, that's right, Pastor. 
Don't be a sellout. Be an all out. Don't sell out what you have. Don't sell out what you've been taught. Don't sell out what you learned in Sunday school and Bible study. Don't sell out what you learned on Sunday morning. Just be an all out for Jesus and watch him elevate you to another level. Because he has power. Take advantage of the full knowledge that God has given us. Because we have to be intimately involved with Jesus. We have to be intimately involved with him. And as we're intimately involved with Jesus, he takes us from one level to the other. Jesus attracts those who are down and out. He attracts those who are poor and broke. He, he attracts those who are struggling with stuff. Jesus attracts those. And that brings me to my final point. I said that the text talks about prayer. I said that the text talks about power. And thirdly, the text talks about promises. And you know already, the promise is never guaranteed unless the person has integrity. The God we serve has integrity. He does what he said he would do and he keeps right on doing it over and over and over and over again. He has made us promises and the God we serve keeps his promises. Yeah. He keeps every last one of his promises. He's not short on his promises. He is able to keep his promises and he keeps those promises regardless of us. Thank you, Lord. God says, if, if you do this, I do that. Mm -hmm. Now, some of you, some of you have uh, up into your Bible listening, and you just passed by Deuteronomy, and Deuteronomy said to you that if you you make sure that you write the, the scriptures on the hearts of your children, put it over the doorpost, and you will be blessed. You heard the scripture where God says that I will bless you in the morning, I will bless you in the evening. God says that I will bless you going in, I will bless you coming out. God says that you are the head and not the tail. It doesn't matter how many likes or dislike you get on Instagram. It doesn't matter how many likes or dislike you get on Facebook. It has nothing to do with whether your TikTok video gets one star, one heart, or several hearts. It's because God has said he will bless you real good a heap in a plenty. So he says promises. He, he says to us that he takes us from glory to glory, virtue to virtue, and verse number four says by the great precious promises that through you may be partakers through it you may be, through these you will be partakers of the divine nature. When God rescues us, when God saves us, he gives us a brand new nature. But in the midst of this brand new nature, our old man keeps rising up. And we love sin. Our sin nature loves sin. I mean, when we talk about the good old days, it was because of sin. Ooh, boy, the good old days. We used to do this and that. It's because our sin nature loves sin. But the text declares God gives us a brand new nature. So he promises if you're saved, if you're born again, if you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, he will give you a brand new nature. One of the, things, one of the worst things you can say, and I've heard it several times, I just am who I am. You just got to accept me the way I am. Ten years later, the same person said the same thing. What that says to me is, you have not allowed God to give you a brand new nature. And also what it says to me is that you are comfortable with being who you are. And the third thing it says to me is you don't want to grow. You don't want to be increased as it says in the text. You don't want to have the abundant blessings that God has to offer. God gives increase. He says... Great, exceedingly great, precious promises. And these things come to us through Jesus Christ who allows us to escape the corruptions of this world. 
if we can escape the corruptions of this world. He promises that he will keep us in the midst of this world. These promises mean that God has self-committed himself. God has committed himself. God has said to us that I'm committed to see you through this journey. God has said to us that I have self-committed myself so much so that I'm going to give you great and precious promises. And these great and precious promises are worthy of moving you from place to place. These great and precious promises are promises that Jesus Christ will make us who we need to become. And you're right, God is still working on me, but don't use it as an excuse. God is still working on all of us, but he has promised that if you walk with him and you be blessed by him, he will give you greater and better things. Let me see if I can call some witnesses. When I look at John chapter 5, I see this man. I see this man that had a problem, and he was there, and he was hanging out, and he was waiting on these things to happen. He wanted an angel to come and stir up the water so he could be healed. But he tells Jesus, Jesus, I can't get in the pool because somebody jumped in front of me. Jesus said, man, stand up and walk. When you come in contact with Jesus, you can walk better. Then I see in John chapter 9, I see there's a man there, and then Jesus is there. I see people on the sidelines. They are blind. They are halt. They are lame. They are dead. They are hopeless. But Jesus blesses those who can't be blessed on their own. Jesus blesses those who can't make it on their own. If I call some witness, I can see those in, in Mark. In Mark chapter 5, there's a man and man running crazy in the graveyard. The Bible says that the men of the town came out, and when the men of the town came out, they tried to make sure they chained him and shackled him, and he broke the chain, he broke the fetters, and he was threatening people as they passed by. When you look at Mark chapter 5, when you get around verse 6, it says, but when Jesus shows up on the scene, the man ran to Jesus, bowed down, and worshipped him. And he was no longer a threat for any man. When you look at Mark chapter 5, there's a woman with an issue of blood. And this blood was flowing from her body for 12 long years. She was weak. And the Bible says she came to the conclusion, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. First of all, she didn't have any business there because her bloody situation should have kept us out of the crowd. Don't let unholy people keep you away from a holy God. Don't let tradition keep you out of the presence of a holy God. Don't let what somebody said, somebody asked, keep you away from a holy God. Let me tell you, this woman bowed down and she touched the hem of his garment. And the blood dried up. When you come in touch with Jesus, you will never ever be the same. When you come in touch with Jesus in Mark chapter 5, you find Jairus' daughter there. The Bible says she was sick, and then it says that she died. And the Bible says Jesus spoke a word, and that girl rose up. Jesus takes dead situations and brings them back to life again. Are your finances dead? Are your relationships dead? Is your mind dead? Is your personality dead? Is your attitude dead? Does it stink? The Bible says in John chapter 11 that when John came up, when Jesus came up on Lazarus' tomb, he said, Lazarus, get up. He had to say, Lazarus, get up, because if he had not said, Lazarus, get up, there would have been a general resurrection before time. All right. Come on. Lazarus came out of the tomb. And then he says, unwrap him, take the grave clothes off of him. When Jesus shows up, when you spend time with Jesus, your life can, be, can never be the same. Well, let me just tell the story. It was May 6th, in 1980, Miss Barbara's sixth period class. Around 2.30 in the evening, in the afternoon, I was sitting in Miss Barbara's sixth period class across the hall from the cafeteria, room number two. Dorothy 
still said to me, you don't have to keep living the way you live. You can be changed right here, right now. I bowed my head in that room that day. I invited Jesus Christ in my life. And my life has been different ever since. Right now, sin has had its way. But my life is different. The devil keeps coming upon me. But my life is different. I'm able to see things differently now because my eyes have been opened and I spend quality time with Jesus. If you're waiting, spend time with Jesus. If you're frustrated, spend time with Jesus. If you're confused, spend time with Jesus. If you're limited, spend time with Jesus. If you're tired, if you are blessed, if you are saved, if you are unsaved, if you are faint, spend time with Jesus. If you're hungry, if you're thirsty, if you're real, if, if you are you you are angry, spend time with Jesus. If you're sad, spend time with Jesus. If you're enthusiastic, spend time with Jesus. If you're just getting started, spend time with Jesus. If you're unsuccessful, spend time with Jesus. If you're about to give up, spend time with Jesus. If you are successful, spend time with him. And he can make it right. He did it for you. It's already done. He did it over 2,000 years ago on a skull hill called Calvary. He died, I tell you. He died on that skull hill. He died on Calvary that day. Mean men killed him. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. They dropped him low. He died for you and he died for me. If you were the only person on planet Earth, Jesus would have died for you. They took him off the cross and laid him in a bar or two. But early that third day morning, he rose with dynamite power. He rose with dunamis power. And he rose with excusia power. Not only did he have the dynamite power, but he also had the authority. For he says to his disciples, all power in heaven and earth it's in my hands. The door of the church is open. Amen. The invitation is extended. There may be somebody present today, whether in person or online, that needs to know Jesus. We, like Peter, are praying for you. God has the power to turn your life around. And God promises if you try him, he will make a difference in your life. If you tried them, you tried it, you tried her, try Jesus. Will you come? The door is open. Will you try Jesus? Will you try him? Because he promises that he will be with you even until the end of the world. If you've never received Jesus Christ in your life, this is your moment. If you would, just bow your head with me and invite him into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. If you're looking for a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. Let us know if you want to join and be a part of this great church in the middle of Southeast Houston. We'll be glad to welcome you. Be glad to make sure that you're comfortable with being a part of our service. When we thank God for who he is and what he's already done, we serve the awesome and the amazing. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. Hallelujah. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand.
If you need an envelope, please raise a hand, your hand and you will be served. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. Jesus at Yahoo.com. Lifting dot Jesus at Yahoo.com. That is lifting dot Jesus at Yahoo.com. If you want to mail your offering, you can do so by mailing to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for this privilege of giving. We ask you to bless every giver and bless every gift. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you would read the scripture with me, coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 7. Whoso, whoever soweth sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever soweth bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7. When I decide to stand, follow first impressions from the rear to the front. Bring forth, when I decide to stand, follow first impressions from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. When I just start to stand, some impression from the rear to the front, bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. Forever and ever, for everything, for all the things, what He's done for me. Billy Banks, Kevin and Katrina Whitlock, 
Beverly Wallace, Omar Gavin, Ed Brennan and family, laborers from the harvest, teachers and students, protection in schools, and world peace. Thank you. Told you if the Lord didn't keep in mind, you'll forget. Okay. Uh, before we go further on in the service, we have uh, some certificates to give out on behalf of Weedy. Uh, these boys and girls performed in the Black History Program, the virtual Black History Program from Weedy. And Sister Perry Shivers is just so nice. She wanted to give them uh, a little token of appreciation. So I want the boys and girls to know that you are not being paid for the talent that God has given you, okay? Amen. But just accept this appreciation from Weedy and our uh, pastor and our uh, sister Shivers. First, we have Daniel Mello. Come up quickly to get your certificate. And come on the back. Birthdays on the 13th, the 9th, the 20th, and the 23rd. Amen. 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 Happy birthday, Mr. Mello. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. May your heart bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. We're so glad you were born. Now, the people who stood up are the people that's going to feed us on the 26th of, of March. Amen. Amen. These are the people going to feed everybody in the room on the 26th of March. So they, they need to get together and talk about what they're going to feed us. Amen. Amen. Isn't it a blessing to be born so you can feed people on your birthday? Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the man. April coming up. Amen. April sure is coming up. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, next Sunday, we will celebrate 30 years of ministry at the New Beginning Church. 30 years. I said 30 whole years. In the morning service, we will be giving way to True Vision Baptist Church. Pastor Lonnie O'Darren is the pastor. And in the afternoon at 3 p.m., we will be giving way to the Homeless Street Baptist Church. Pastor Murray Martin is the pastor. Amen. So please come back um, to both services and be a part of both services. We will we will have our presentation at both services, and so we uh, we have some actors and actresses in the in the congregation. So come on back out and watch how 
they present to us uh, on next Sunday, second Sunday, May 12th. Amen. 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 Okay, let's prepare our hearts for communion. Let me pray for our prayer list before, before we move. Father God, we thank you now, Lord, we bless your name. God, thank you for those on our prayer list. We ask you to bless them and hold them. Keep them, Lord, as only you can. Father God, we ask you to bind them up and bless their lives. Give them the desires of their hearts and bless them to always recognize you as God. Heal now, Lord, where the doctor said can't be done. Heal now, Lord, and guide medical technicians. Touch now, Lord, and give us miracles among our midst that we will see your miraculous power, your dunamis, and your exclusive power. That we, Father God, will glorify you and praise you in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. It's time for communion. So we're praying for the Carter family and the, and the transition of, of her niece. We're lifting up the Carter family. Amen. God is in control. He is. Let us focus our hearts on communion. Jesus, Jesus met with his disciples and he said to them, as often as you do this, you show forth my death and my suffering until I come again. So those of you who are saved and baptized, this is your time to recognize what Jesus has, has already done by way of communion. As we prepare for communion, I want to make sure that you have forgiven people not holding grudges your heart is set straight and you will have oneness with God because the fact of the matter is it's more important to be in oneness with God than in oneness with man All right. so let's open our hearts for communion Father God we come now praying and asking you to bless these moments bless every person forgive us for our sins we ask you, Father God, to bless us to repent of our sins. Hold us in the palm of your hand, Father. Bless the table. Bless this food and this drink. Bless us that we will not drink damnation unto our souls. Say, Jesus' name we pray. Amen.